This is what I call pop. I don't know if this is would be called poverty porn, but you know they like to have those stories in the news media about look at this fourteen year old kid broke his arm and his leg and he still finished his his shift at Taco Bell. You know, hey, here's a guy who works as a janitor. He has to walk sixteen miles a day, and then they finally bought him a car. He's sixty years old. It's you know they all pitched in to get him a bike. Like that's not. Those aren't feel good stories. Those are horrible stories about how messed up our economy is in the United States. And here's another one. It's about our messed up priorities. Watch a t- a hockey team made a bunch of teachers scrounge around on their knees picking up $1 bills to fund their classes. So that's who funds the public schools now, minor league hockey teams. Yep, that's who does it. <laughs> Ten South Dakota teachers participated in a promotion run by a minor league hockey team over the weekend, which required them to scramble around on their knees, picking up one dollar bills to benefit their students. Should the students have to do that at the very least? Wouldn't you make the kids do that? It's their (laughs) education. Why are you making the fucking teachers do that? In what amounts to a horrifying commentary on the state of education funding, the Sioux Falls Stampede ran a promotion they called Dash for Cash at their game on Saturday night. Uh, Sure, it amounts to a horrifying commentary, but also great new season of Squid Game on Netflix, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) I hope they had security there to make sure none of those greedy teachers kept any of the money for their own health (laughs) care. During the contest's first intermission, the teachers were brought out to the center ice and positioned on a carpet with $5,000 bills spread across. When given the the go signal, the teachers began scrounging for the dough, stuffing as much as they could down their shirts as quickly as possible. How else do you propose we fund critical race theory? Come on! (laughs) Am I right? Here it is. So here, here it is. Oh, no. At the Premier Center for the Stampede Game, where after the first period, local teachers will participate in the first ever Dash for Cash. $5,000 is up for grabs for teachers to use in their classrooms. Jesus H. Effing. Here, you want to see it? Here it is. So here they are spreading out the money. <laughs> So there they are spreading out the cash. Isn't that nice? Uh, here's another one. There we go. There's the cash. Is that all singles? That's what that is? I guess that's all singles. Oh my god. Should I should they should they have to fight to the death for chalk money? What I mean what <laughs> You know, strippers bring home all singles, and that's less degrading than this. Y- yes. <laughs> Here we go. Here's this another video. Well, if you you know if you've ever been to South Dakota, which I have, this is actually one of the more uplifting aspects of it. Actually. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been to South Dakota. It's a pretty depressing place. Uh, Teachers on their hands and knees grabbing for $1 bills to buy classroom supplies for the amusement of a crowd. Yeah, totally uplifting and fun. Not at all totally dystopian. Non collagen. Super sad since we give a blank check to defense contractors and we lose wars on the regular. Hey, how much do teachers spend on school supplies? Here's it. Here it is. So they average four hundred and fifty nine dollars. Uh, a teacher spends uh, of their own money on classroom supplies. On average, on average, a teacher goes into their own pocket for around five. On average, now certain now in California it's six hundred and sixty four dollars. That's the average. So lots of teachers are spent are spending more money than that out of their own pocket in the richest country in the world. So there, so six hundred dollars in California, six hundred twenty-eight in Michigan. Look at that, Florida four seventy. Where's another? Uh, yep, there you go. So, 
Every heartwarming human interest story in America is like, he raised $20,000 to keep 200 orphans from being crushed in the orphan crushing machine. And they never ask why an orphan crushing machine exists or why you'd need to pay to prevent it from being used. <laughs> so what does the federal government spend on education? $64 billion a year. That's what the federal government spends. Now, most of the education money is financed at the state level, but that's all that the, the federal government spends, $64 billion. They just raised the defense budget almost $40 billion in one year. Extra. And that's every year forever. Uh, in fact, this is what uh, total education spending in the United States, $740 billion. Uh, this is what we spent uh, this year on defense, $777 billion. Wow. Jimmy, you'd think they'd, they'd spend a little bit more money on children, our nation's future CIA victims. <laughs> <laughs> so here is... This is from the New York Times. They did. Now, what's wrong with education funding? Well, it's because how they fund it. They don't just split up all the money in the state equally. Watch how they do it. Watch this. Another major theme in this policy document is education. And the wording in here I find quite interesting. The Democrats say, quote, the document is the 2020 Democratic Party platform. We must provide world-class education in every zip code to every child because education is a critical public good. They use this word zip code to represent the fact that in America, schools get their funding based on the real estate taxes of the houses within that school district. The more expensive the neighborhood, the more funding goes to the school. So over here in Illinois, which is like the quintessential liberal state, there's this one county that contains the city of Chicago. It's called Cook County. The residents here voted overwhelmingly for Democratic candidates in the presidential and senatorial elections last year. Often what would happen is that this would just be one big school district and that all the taxes from all the towns in this county would be put into one bucket and distributed equally throughout the county. That's but not the what happens. Of this very blue Democratic county have actually decided to divide themselves into more than 140 school districts. So now you have all these tiny school districts like this one, which are like gerrymandered around the richest part of town. And so all of the taxes from these rich homeowners go into one little bucket and then only get distributed to the schools within this rich region of the county. It can be on the same block that the town line runs through the middle of it. And if you live on one side of that line, you're consigned to an inferior education by virtue of the fact that you and your neighbors don't have as much money. And if you live on the other side, you're basically a member of a club that is sponsoring a private school, essentially, for the benefit of that small group of kids who are lucky enough to live in that affluent community. And the result is that poor communities have less money to educate their children, and rich communities have more money to educate their children. This is crazy. It means basically that the kids who have the greatest needs have the fewest resources. The same thing is happening in wealthy, liberal Connecticut. We're so that's how we fund schools in America, which, which is crazy. Exactly. Why, why don't they just take the whole uh, Los Angeles and everybody who pays their property taxes, it goes into an education fund. No, they split it up by school district. It's crazy. It's crazy that they do that like that in Chicago. But that's how we we do it all across the country. That's not equal access. That's not equal access. That well, is not. It is, it is unequal. Jimmy, wasn't all that stuff also what it was like to racially segregate, too, when they initially set that up, I thought, you know, besides just the uh, I guess now they just want all the poor is kept out. But yeah, at the time that was to separate people, you know, uh, uh, and get away with it to get around all that. Uh, all that uh, that uh, segregation. Civil rights. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. that all that integration. So a way to get around that is that you can still gerrymander school districts by money. That that's what they're doing. Yeah. So uh, fantastic. Thanks for the amateur hockey team or the semi-pro hockey team for help funding the schools. You, you wouldn't think we would need to do that in the richest country in the world. But, you know, over in places like Finland, they have three teachers in every classroom and they all have a master's degree and there's only 20 kids in each classroom. And I wonder why they're always at the top of the education tests in the world. Not that the education tests are the be all and end all. Uh, but why don't we do that in the United States? Why don't we, you know, uh, you know how many students Steph had in her classroom the year she retired? 40 each class. She taught 183 kids a day, teenagers a day. How many of those kids are psychopaths? One out of a hundred. So that's probably two psychopaths and 10 sociopaths. She had to teach every day.
right? Because one in ten are sociopaths. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what, and why? Why do we have to do that? Why? Well, because we don't value education in America. Uh, I mean, as a as a country. Uh, well, I mean, it costs a lot of money, though. If you do, <laughs> if we do, the, the education system is very expensive once you get out of the public. <laughs> once you go to college, yeah, it's overvalued. I would say. Oh, of course. I mean, t- 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 skyrocketing tuitions for absolutely no reason in co- college colleges across the country. It's nuts. And administrators making millions of dollars. It's not right. But anyway, there you go. Uh, I used to say in my act. In the 90s, when I would talk about the drug war after I saw Bill Hicks, and I would say, you know, we're building more prisons than schools. Uh, what kind of country do you think we're going to have in 20 years? Well, here we are. We've got yeah. homeless people everywhere. We have a two-tiered society, rich and poor. Uh, 600,000 people go bankrupt every year when they get sick. This is tens of thousands of people die just because of it. Uh that this is the country. This is the word. This is it. Go ahead, Kurt. You want to say something? Oh, I was going to say it's funny. Like there's a lot of ex convicts that got educational programs in prison that they only could get in prison. That's right. <laughs> like you have to go to prison to get. Yeah. <laughs> what you should have got. Yeah, you have to go. You know, it's cost seventy thousand dollars a year in California to, to lock up one prisoner. Seventy thousand dollars a year. Don't you think it would be better spent to give somebody a UBI? <laughs> Of forty thousand dollars a year and say stay out of prison, I, I think that you'd save almost half the money. I mean, most of those people in there are nonviolent drug offenders to begin with. Well, but Jimmy, once you figure in the money you save, making them fight fires, yeah, it pays for itself. <laughs> you know what I also love is how people are saying like crime is up now. Wow, crime is really up. We need more cops. I wonder why crime is up. You crushed the working class for a year straight. You gave them no relief. You wouldn't even give them a two thousand dollar check. And crime is up. That's really a, boy. We better bring in a real expert to figure out what's going on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hey, come see a live stand-up show. We're doing New Year's Eve in Studio City. In January, we'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina. In February, we're going to be in Philadelphia. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all our tickets.